Good afternoon. My name is Abdi Rasek, and uh, I was asked to talk about uh, left atrial appendage occluder devices uh, as an alternative to anticoagulation therapy in patients uh, with uh, atrial fibrillation. Um, I don't have any conflict of interest regarding uh, this talk. Um, as uh, you know, most common arrhythmia in clinical uh, uh, practice is atrial fibrillation, which accounts for one third of hospitalization for cardiac rhythm disturbances. It uh, has uh, caused a 66% increase in atrial fibrillation hospitalization, uh, and it's due to aging population and increased uh, chronic heart disease. It, uh, is, uh, its prevalence is about 2.2 million in US and uh, for more than 4 million in the uh, European Union. And the cost is uh, significant. It's estimated to be 16 billion in Europe. One out of six stroke is due to AFib and uh, it, the prevalence of it uh, and the incidence in octogenarian is about one of three strokes. Furthermore, uh, the strokes that happens because of AFib are larger strokes that can cause uh, more of uh, incapacity in patients. Uh, this shows how the atrial fibrillation is an aging population uh, problem. As, as you can see, in two decades of life, the risk of atrial fibrillation increases from 4% to 12% in uh, octogenarians. The devices that I'm going to talk about, they're all uh, FDA approved. Watchman was the first device that was approved in US, and subsequently the second generation of Watchman Flex was approved in US. And then subsequently I will talk about ACP Amulet, which is a, a new kid in the block. It was just approved uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, ACP Amulet is a left atrial appendage uh, occluder, which is the second generation of Amplatzer, and it's constructed from a nitinol mesh. It has a lobe and a disc, uh, and uh, the lobe part of it can go anywhere from 16 to 34 millimeter, and the disc would uh, range from 22 to 41 uh, millimeter, and I will go over it in more details and the clinical trials that has been uh, done. But let's first start talking about the first generation of the device, which, which was Watchman. The first study which was done was Protect AF study, which was a pr uh, prospective randomized trial of non-inferiority design with five-year follow-up. As you can see, uh, there was no dif uh, difference uh, when you follow up to five years in ischemic uh, stroke. However, when you look at the primary efficacy of stroke, cardiovascular death, and uh, systemic embolism, beyond three years, there is a, a mortality benefit of the device over warfarin. And this was at the era that we didn't have any of the uh, uh, new oral anticoagulation therapy. Uh, All-cause mortality also showed a benefit of the device and the convergence between the two um, arm uh, around uh, two and a half, three years. Cardiovascular mortality was less in uh, device arm two. However, if you look at the um, safety data, uh, you can see that initially there, were, uh, there was benefit to warfarin, but uh, when you're following up to five years, uh, there was no significant difference. And this um, was due to initial procedural complications and uh, uh, major bleeding initially that brought up um, the issue of the safety events in the arm of the watchman. Uh, what were concerns with Protect AF and why it was not approved by FDA at that point? Uh, the issues were high initial rate of procedural complications, failure to implant the device in some patients, and low CHADS uh, 2 score. Uh, at the time, we were not using CHADS VASC score, which essentially gives you an indication of the risk of uh, uh, thrombotic event. 
prevail was the second study uh, that was requested by FDA and was also a randomized study compared, comparing Watchman and uh, Warfarin to confirm uh, protect AF results and answers the concerns. As you can see, even with um, operators that were not um, as seasoned and there were uh, a certain number of the operators who were um, initial operators uh, with the experience that uh, operators gained, the implant success rate increased from 90.9% to 95.1% and the risk of uh, tamponade and ca uh, cardiac perforation went from 1.6% to 0.4%. In fact, there was only 1%, uh, one patient who had um, cardiac uh, perforation requiring repair. The study uh, showed also non-inferiority, although in this study uh, the patients who were on control group did amazingly uh, well uh, because of the vigorous control of their uh, anticoagulation therapy. Um, if you are looking at the secondary efficacy endpoint, which was stroke, um, uh, or uh, or any adverse event after seven days uh, or, or systemic embolization, uh, post-randomization, there was uh, no difference. Update from this Watchman clinical uh, trials at five-year uh, follow-up of PROTECT, there was superior efficacy, reduced mortality and similar overall safety as warfarin. When you add PROTECT AF and PREVAIL meta-analysis, there were similar all-cause uh, stroke, but less cardiovascular death compared with warfarin. There was significant reduction in, bleed, in bleeding related costs uh, in Watchman uh, group um, compared to oral anticoagulation eligible uh, patients. You can see that the primary efficacy uh, and hemorrhagic stroke showed uh, a benefit of using these devices. However, um, the ischemic stroke did not show any benefit and all co cause mortality after two, uh, after two and a half, three years, it showed a divergence in favor of uh, the device. Uh, what about the amulet? The, the initial studies were all done in Europe. There was a study group uh, with the 22 participating centers all over Europe. Enrollment was from December 2008 to November of 2013 with more than 1,000 um, patient and more uh, and 1345 uh, patients follow up years as you can see stroke uh, there was a significant uh, uh, decrease in stroke uh, reduction um, versus estimated based on uh, uh, chad's uh, vasc score uh, and it decreased by 59 percent uh, effectiveness in bleeding reduction uh, was also more than um, 61%. Uh, and in this patient, a dual antiplatelet therapy was used. The next generation of the Watchman was Watchman Flex. Uh, and Watchman Flex had the advantage of being a, a, a more of a closed system. So you can push it inside of the left atrial appendage. There are not any sharp prones, as you can see the difference between the two devices that increases the risk of um, uh, uh, bleeding. Uh, uh, and uh, as you can see, there was 72% relative risk reduction in bleeding compared to um, uh, warfarin and 27% risk reduction in all-cause mortality compared to warfarin. The study was a pinnacle flex ID study. It was a single arm, non-randomized study. Um, and in this study, only uh, the, the uh, DOAC uh, was used, 400 patients in 29 uh, US sites. And the patients were on DOAC plus aspirin for 45 days, followed by clopidogrel and aspirin up to uh, six months, and then uh, aspirin. The TE was done at mm, uh, uh, 45 uh, days and uh, 12 months, but they were follow up at 45 days, six uh, months, 12 months, 18 months, and 24 months. Uh, in this study, they also looked at all-cause death, ischemic stroke, uh, systemic embolization, 
primary efficacy endpoint was uh, the rate of effectiveness uh, of closing the left atrial appendage with a PERI device of uh, leak of less than uh, 5 millimeter demonstrated by T at 12 months. And um, they looked at ischemic stroke or systemic embolization at uh, 24 months from the time of enrollment. And as you can see in this study, uh, the success rate uh, was more than any of the previous studies that used uh, Watchman um, or Watchman Flex and the success uh, to implant was 98.5%. Uh, um, it has to be noted that 6.6% of all patients in the Pinnacle study uh, were not able to receive Watchman devices and 97% of these subjects were successfully implanted with the new generation Watchman uh, Flex. And as you can uh, see, uh, th uh, this device goes anywhere between 20 millimeter and 35 millimeter, and uh, 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 essentially uh, these, uh, the, the size of this left atrial appendage was all over the place, but they were successful in uh, implanting um, 98, more than 98% of these uh, cases. Uh, if you look at the primary safety uh, uh, endpoint, uh, the goal, uh, the performance goal was 4.2%, but uh, really the complication was only 0.5%. Uh, there was no all cause death. Um, there was a, an a ischemic stroke, but there was no systemic embolization and no device procedure related um, events which required surgery. Um, uh, essentially, in this uh, study, it showed the uh, great safety of uh, Watchman Flex, and then Watchman Flex was approved uh, by FDA um, uh, to be used when they looked at the primary safety endpoint, which showed only 0.5% of uh, complication. And pr uh, uh, primary um, efficacy endpoint. Uh, was great and there was no leak of less than 0.5%. Uh, they were hoping for 97%, but they had 100% without any uh, uh, major uh, leak. And when you're looking at use of oral anticoagulation post uh, uh, implant, um, a majority of the patients were on uh, 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 essentially apixaban or uh, rivaroxaban, and oral anticoagulation discontinued at 45 uh, days in about 96% uh, of this population. So you can see that oral uh, anticoagulation discontinuation uh, at 45 days was 96%, which was superior at, at all of the previous study using uh, uh, Watchman, which was anywhere between 87 to 93%. Furthermore, de device-related uh, thrombus and embolic event uh, happened only in two out of 300 95 patient after 12 months of uh, follow-up. Um, all of all patients were on dual antiplatelet therapy or aspirin at the time of uh, device-related uh, uh, thrombus detection. Um, two subjects experienced ischemic stroke or systemic embolization. Uh, and one of the bleeding that has happened was in a patient who had um, essentially ablation, which was not related um, uh, to the uh, 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 device. Um, in the European limited market uh, uh, release also the technical success was 100% uh, uh, and precordial effusion was 0.6% uh, with 1.2% access site uh, complication. Uh, so the good news is there are different device uh, designs which will provide solution to different patient needs and survival benefit data uh, with uh, Watchman uh, where en en uh, is encouraging um, and essentially left atrial appendage closure is associated with lower risk of stroke in patient with contraindication to oral anticoagulation and whenever even the stroke happens, there, uh, these strokes are less devastating. 
Um, so uh, there are several points. Uh, number one, patient definitely benefits from less intracranial hemorrhage. Point number two is the uh, risk of implanting of this device um, significantly um, decreased by decreasing uh, the excess complication, pericardial effusion, stroke, or and device uh, leak or uh, thrombus. Um, uh, finally, we had significant reduce in complication of the device itself. Uh, the risk factors for device-related thrombus are uh, things like uh, prior uh, TIA or stroke, larger left atrial, left atrial appendage diameter, lower ejection fraction, permanent a um, AFib, and uh, device position, especially if you have a leak. Uh, and the question of how much leak is acceptable leak is still subject to debate. Uh, what are the unanswered questions? The target population is not still well defined. Should this procedure be for all or um, limited to patients intolerant to oral anticoagulation therapy? How relevant are the findings of these studies in the era of uh, these DOACs? And are all of the devices equivalent? Do we need comparative studies? Are they particular anatomy that a one or a different kind of device uh, works better. The next study is Champion AF, which is a head-to-head -head, uh, comparing the safety and efficacy of Watchman Flex to uh, DOAX in uh, a patient with non-valvular atrial fibrillation with lower risk. We are going to talk quickly about the uh, Amplatzer Emulet IDE randomized trial. Uh, this is the uh, trial that looked at the Emulet uh, uh, and initiated in 2016 to establish safety and efficacy the efficacy of Amplatzer Emulet. Um, it is the dual seal mechanism that we talked about, and there was no need for oral anticoagulation, but just dual antiplatelet therapy. Um, essentially, it was in patients with paroxysmal persistent or permanent atrial fibrillation with CHAS VASCO more than three or CHAS score of uh, more than two, which were suitable for short-term warfarin therapy, but didn't enable to take long-term oral anticoagulation therapy. Uh, and essentially they had a TE at uh, 45 days and uh, uh, 12 months. Um, and all of these patients were on dual antiplatelet therapy uh, or aspirin plus oral anticoagulation therapy. Uh, it was a randomized study that compared Emulet to um, Watchman and primary endpoint was uh, safety uh, at 12 months and effectiveness at 18 uh, um, months. And we looked at the uh, uh, mechanism of action at 45 days and primary safety endpoint at 12 months. Uh, as you can see, it was a one-to-one -one randomization between Watchman and Emulet. It was Watchman and not Watchman Flex because at the time of the study, Watchman Flex was not out. These are some baseline characteristics of the patients with a chance of ask of uh, more than four in this population. And this shows at the time of the uh, discharge, majority of the patients on am Emulet were on dual antiplatelet therapy, uh, but still one fifth were on uh, oral anticoagulation therapy. On Watchman, majority were on oral anticoagulation. Uh, therapy. As you can see, a residual uh, jet of uh, more than 5 millimeter was only 1% uh, in the amulet um, uh, arm. Um, again, it was non-inferiority uh, of uh, the amulet compared to the watchman. Um, in uh, this study, uh, procedure complication was higher initially and then it went down. As you can see, the pericardial effusion was 2.4% amulet, but it went down significantly when the uh, operators gained experience with uh, this uh, new um, device. Uh, ischemic stroke or systemic embolism in 18 months were similar with Watchman. Um, also, a uh, secondary endpoint of uh, stroke systemic embolism and cardiovascular uh, uh, death uh, was similar and major bleeding was uh, uh, similar. 
um, despite low oral anticoagulation usage, um, again, uh, major bleeding rates were comparable between uh, the groups. And if you look at the device-related thrombus, two watchman patient experienced ischemic stroke, whereas uh, um, none of the amulet patient did. Uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to go to the conclusion of this study that the dual seal amulet left atrial appendage occluder was uh, superior with respect to left atrial appendage occlusion and non inferior with respect of safety and efficacy in patients with non valvular atrial fibrillation compared to uh, the watchman. Again, there was no comparison to watchman um, uh, flex and all three primary endpoints, which was closure at 45 days, safety at 12 months and effectiveness and 18 months uh, was met. Uh, and uh, as a result, in August 14, 2021, uh, Amulet was approved. Uh, what is next uh, is Catalyst randomized clinical trial. It's a multi-center uh, trial, which is a randomization between Amulet versus NOAC. And it's going to look at the 2,500 patient in 150 centers. And the study was just started. Thank you.